Hello guys, good morning. Uh, so sorry about that. Alicia has a problem with the computer, some technical issues there. So I'm going to continue today's webinar, okay? Um, let me know, please, if you had any questions until the moment that she stops, so I can continue, I can answer your questions and we can continue, okay? So as she told you, today's webinar is going to be about the follow-up of the system on your React account and how you can do your follow-ups. I'm going to try to catch up really quick. Uh, please, uh, anybody, let me know if you have any questions so I can answer those. Uh, Maureen, Nash, let me know, please. Okay, I'm going to do a simple search, okay, on my end. So I can send some properties again to my follower. I'm going to go to Miami Dale right here and type of family, it will be single family types that are the properties that I'm looking for. I'm going to select properties that are for sale by owner in, my, in Miami Dale because I am my agent and I don't want to see properties that have agents as well. So I'm going to select this type, okay, for sale by owner. And those are the properties that I'm going to try to do follow-ups, okay? Let's select any, maybe a city. I want to be in Miami Gardens. Let's okay, try to narrow this. Let's see if we can find any there. No, not in Miami, the gardens. Let's select only the county name. And click on search. I'm going to select two types of properties, okay? The for sale by owner and properties that are for sale with agents as well. As soon as you run the search, there you can select all the properties that you're planning to do a following or a follow-up, okay? So right here, I have 158 properties that are being for sale by owner and that I want to contact. I'm going to select the first three. And if you want to send the properties to your follow-up, you just need to click right here at the top on the follow-up icon. The system will always ask you if you want to, how do you want to add the properties? If you want to add them as buying, selling, prospecting, or listing. I'm going to select buying because that's what I want to do. I want to buy these properties. And that's it. The properties are successfully added to my follow-up system, okay? As soon as you do that, you will be able to see right here on the second column on your results, the follow-up status. The follow-up status, it will be containing the letter of the type of the option that you selected. So B for buying, S for selling, P for prospecting, or if you are an agent, then you will see an L for listing right here, okay? So now that I have these three properties in my follow-up, I, I want to do another search to add more properties. I want to say change the data, okay, that are right here, and I'm going to select properties that are now for sale. Again, I click on search, it will take me to my results, where I can select more properties, okay, and add them to my follow -up. Again, I'm going to select the first three properties and I click on follow -up. I'm selecting these three properties randomly, but let me check right here the price. Ooh, this price is really high for me. And uh, let me select another one, maybe this one, this one. Remember that in your search, you can select the specific listing price that you are looking for so you can narrow your results. Again, three properties that were, adding, that were added uh, to my follow-up as buying. So right here I have follow-up status, B for buying. Now, if I go to my follow-up, my follow-up tab that is right here on my left side, I'm going to see there all the properties that I have added, okay? Properties that I want to do follow-ups and the system will tell me exactly when did I add it, okay? When did I add these uh, properties? Now, you will see right here, the first column is about the emails, 
I will explain you this in a little uh, in a little bit. The second column is about the pending task. I will explain this too. And this is the follow-up status of every problem. Remember that the status from your results and from your follow-up can be a little bit different, okay? So if I have the color green or the color orange or blue or I don't know, red, I can check those right here on this icon, the legend icon up right in my screen. And there you can see what is the meaning or the definition of all the status on your follow-up. Green for active for sale, properties that are being active for sale, that are with an agent and they are listed. No, these properties are not with an agent. Maybe it could be a relative or a friend of the owner that is the contact for the property, okay? Then you have properties that are no longer active, properties that were for sale, but now they are not, maybe they were temporarily withdraw from the market, maybe they are under a contract, and that's why the status of there are pending, and we have them here as non-active. Then you will see properties that are by owner, that are blue. These properties are off market. They are not selling the property. The property is only with the owner, and you can try to contact them in case that you want to maybe make an offer on the properties to try to sell the properties for them. Then you have brown properties that are expired and properties that are sold, they were already sold, they are going to be red. And again, the letters inside the circles are B for buying, the way that you add the properties to your follow-up, S for selling, P for prospecting, and L for listing, okay? Any question, guys, about this? Let me know, please. Let me check right here. Remember, you can chat with me through the chat window, or you can ask a system as well. You can raise your hand if you want me to stop or to repeat anything, okay? Okay, no questions, let me continue. Once that I have added my properties here, then I can start do any kind of task that I want. Now, if you see, you will, you will notice a difference in the contact information for these properties. This is why for properties that are green, that are with an agent, the contact, it will be the agent. And the agents, they leave their full information there so you can contact them. And what I mean about full information is that, for example, Alicia Haynes, okay, that is the agent of this property. And I have here the owner information as well for Anastash, okay? For owners, we only have phone numbers. And for agents, we have all the information that, that we can get from there from them. I have here two emails to contact Alicia and I have several phone numbers, okay? Well, two phone numbers actually, so I can contact her as well. What is the, the difference between the properties that are being for sale by owner? The contact information of that property is only have a phone number. So you don't have an email address and you cannot send the email through the phone. Let me just, let's wait for this to load so you can see the information there. Okay, so here, Laurie Reader, it says here agent, but th that is just the type that we add that contact to this property, okay? She's not an agent, she's only a friend, okay, of the owner or maybe a relative, Okay, that is only the type of contact that Reafax add. But she doesn't have or she doesn't left a contact information or a contact email, only the phone number. So you need to call her first and ask for an email. You can add that email address by editing the contract. And after you have the email address, you will need to send or you, you will be able to send the emails, uh, the text messages, or the contracts to this particular contact. In this case, this property appears to be an uh, probate, sorry, because you have a contact information for the attorney, that is Jeremy, okay? So for Jeremy, you do have an email address and phone numbers. Let's check this property. Let's say that after I have added my properties to my follow-up, 
I want to start, I want to do a research about them. You just need to click on the address of the property and go to the overview. So there you can review everything about the property. And as I told you, this property is actually a probate, see? The only properties that you will see that have a contact for an attorney is because the property is a probate. So right here on this particular overview, I can check the owner information. I can check the for sale by owner information, okay? Whatever they have listed and the, the price, the listing price of the property. This is Laurie, okay? She's the contact for the owner. So you can contact her in case uh, that you want to present an offer to this property. And if I move right here, I will see the case of the probate. This is the ID notice. This is the file number, the division and the deceased person, the publication date. Well, this is in 2014. So maybe the, pro the probate is already closed and let's check that. This is the deceased person, Joey Stone Bauer. And if the, yes, if the owner has changed it's because the probate is already closed, okay? So the property already has a different address. Now, again, I will suggest you now that we have checked the probate, that is an old probate, then you just need to contact Laurie if you want to put in contact with her or with the owner to um, make, to present an offer, okay? Or to send a contract or to send an email or even a text message. Now let's go back. That is the difference between the for sale by owner and the for sale with an agent. Remember the agents, they left on any uh, particular um, uh, register about their listing, they left their contact information, okay? So you have the emails already. Now, on my follow-up, what can I do? I can select all my properties, all the properties that I want to send contracts or an emails right away. Again, I'm only going to select the three that are for sale with agents because for those, I do have an email address, okay? And right here on the system, I can calculate an offer price. Let's say that after I have reviewed these properties, I want to send maybe 70% based on the listing prices of the properties. So I click on calculate offer. I will put right here 70% of that offer. I can round the amounts to 500 and click on apply. The system will calculate for me 70% based on those listing prices and I will have them right here on my column that it says offer. Do you see? Now, what if I want to send these contracts right away? I just need to select the properties and click right here at the top on documents. And that's it. The system will take me to the send documents uh, tab on the system where I need to select in my account the contract that I want to send. You will need to have upload in your account different PDS files and create the templates for those. Okay, I have several in my account. I'm going to select this one. This is an as if contract. And I can also send with this contract any additional document that I want. I can send my lead based pen disclosure. I can send my proof of fund and maybe my earnest money deposit, okay? And that is how I have them selected. An addendum, my proof of fund, and my earnest money deposit. If I want to change right here the initial de deposit, I just change it. If I want to modify the inspection dates, say that I'm going to use seven dates. If I want to change the acceptance date, the closing date, add additional deposit or add, add additional deposit dates, I can do that as well my information as the buyer on the contract is going to be there and it's going to be auto populated as well on the contract and the seller is going to be there too. Now, I don't work on real estate in Florida, so I'm not going to send the emails, but I'm going to preview one of these contracts for you. You can click right here at the top on preview, select a contract, preview it. You need to have your pop-ups allowed on your browser, so that way the system will show you in another tab how the contract is going to be received by them, okay? Right here, so this is the PDS. 
the PDF file, sorry. This is the seller, okay, of the property. This is me as the buyer. This is the offer price that I calculate, my initial deposit, the information of my escrow agent is going to be there. Any date, any signatures or the initials, everything is going to be there in that contract, okay? Any check mark, any paragraph or text that you want to add is going to be there for you to read. Let's wait just a little bit for this to load all the pages. All right, I believe that my system is a little bit slow. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't do it. Let's try then to download the document. If you want to print the document and you don't want to download the PDF file completely full and then send them like in a cash email from an, a different part that is not VFX. You can do that as well. You can just click on download Again, you can select what is the property that you want to download, the contract, okay, for that property that you want to download and click on download. It will be there on your uh, computer. You can check everything. And that way you can also, if you need to, you can edit the contract, okay? I will show you that in just a second. Let me open the file right here. Okay, again, this is the contract a different contract, okay, for a different property, offer price, initial deposit, ev everything is there in this case. Let's wait, let's go to the last pages. Right here on the additional terms, you can add a text, check marks, okay, for the contract, uh, the documents or additional documents that you are sending, initials, signatures, everything is going to be there. Your additional documents are going to be there as well. This is my let the explain disclosure. This is my proof of fund with my bank statement, okay? Another page. And this is my earnest money deposit. Now, let's say that I want to modify something on this contract before I send it. How can I do that? I just need to click on edit, okay? Modif modifications on the contract will override the base template. This means that if you modify something in a particular contract, you are changing the contract forever, okay? If you want to put it back the way it was before, you need to edit the contract again and change it that way, okay? Right here, let's click on yes, and let's click at the bottom where it says edit contract. So I'm going to modify on this particular contract. I'm going to, I don't know, page number two, and I'm going to add or change a check mark there. Right here, I need to change to page number two. Okay, this is the one that I want to change. I don't want to put the check mark here. I want to put it right here. And that's it. I did the modifications. You don't need to save it any place. You just close it and the template will be there and click on save right here. And that's it. That's how you have modified the variables inside your contract, in this case, this one. And now you just need to send it by email. When you click on this icon, the system will take you to the email template, the one that you have as a default or another email template. You just select it, okay? Or maybe change the email template from your manage template right here, select a different one and load it. I'm going to use this one and then click on send documents. And that's it. That is how you can send a contract with ReFX, okay, or through ReFX. Again, I'm not going to send it because I don't want these um, agents receive an offer price from me as I don't work as an agent, okay? Hi, I have a question here, or Mr. Nash, uh, you had there a question. Let me know, please. Through the chat window, you can ask any question if you need to. Or Irene, I don't know if you have any questions about the system or about today's webinar, about how to do a follow-up. 
Okay, I will be waiting for your questions. Okay, so that is how you can send contracts through the follow-up. Now, if you want to send an email only and not a contract, just click right here on email. It will open the email tab and here you can either modify manually something like for example, I'm going to read, I'm going to delete this from my email template or again, you can uh, change the template to a different one. Let's say that it's going to be an email about a follow-up on an offer. Select the email template and load it. It will change the subject of the email and the body of the email. Remember that first you need to create your email templates, okay? On the system so you can see them right here. You can also attach any particular, any kind of document to this email from your computer. Just click on the click icon there. And in your computer, you can select any, uh, any attachment that you want to, okay? For example, I want to send this attachment right here. And that's it, the attachment will be there and it will be sent as a, so it will be sent through the email that you have selected. Okay, let's close this. I don't want to send the email. And now, if you want to send text messages to these contacts, okay, through your follow-up, you only need to make sure that these contacts right here have a phone number that is a cell phone type of number as the first option. And there is how you can make sure that they are going to receive a text message through the system. Okay, let me check. Right here, for example, let's check the contact for this property, 100 Northwest uh, 4th Street, 40th Street, sorry, Pablo. Pablo is the agent and Pablo have left their contact, an email, phone number, that is a home, an office, and an office fax. If I want to check if this, uh, if Pablo is, um, sorry, if I want to contact Pablo through an SMS, I will need to call him first to this number or maybe to this number and ask him if these numbers are cell phones or there are a, a, a number that they can receive a text message through. Then I just need to change the contact right here. I need to edit this contact and change the type of number. So if this is a no cell phone number, I just select cell and save it. I need to make sure, make sure, sorry, that the cell phone type of number is the first option on the list. And that's how I can send him a text message through the system. Now I'm going to select only uh, Pablo right here, sorry, this one. And now I'm going to click on send SMS. This is the template that I have for my SMS. Again, you can change it by selecting on the manage tempo, another one, maybe the default that VFX have there for you, or you can create your own template, okay? And then send it right here. As soon as you do that, if Pablo has that number as a cell phone and he can receive text messages through that, through that number, then he will receive it. You just need to click on send. Again, I'm not going to do it because I don't work with a um, real estate and I don't want anybody to receive a text message from me. Any questions guys about how you can send a contract, how you can send an email, or how you can send a text message through your follow-up system before we move on? Let me know please. Okay, no questions. Now, let's say that I already sent to this particularly properties, these three properties right here, I already sent them last week a contract. And I want to do that again. I want to send maybe an email to do a follow-up. Or let's say that I, I did send today the contracts and I want to contact them again in maybe three or four days, four days from now. How can I do that? you can schedule the tasks, okay? And they could be made automatically by the system 
regardless that if you are connected or logging into your accounts, the system will do the tasks for you. You just need to select the properties and then click on a schedule task, select if the task is automatically or manually. Remember, automatically the system will do it for you. And manually the tasks are going to stay there pending until you complete the task, okay? You can select the type of task that you want to. If you select a manual tabs, you will see more options, okay? But if you select an automatically task, then you will only be able to send an email, a contract, a fax, or a text message. So let's say that I want to send an email to these three properties uh, four days from now, okay? Maybe on Monday or on Tuesday, actually. I want these people to receive an email on Tuesday about a follow-up of an offer that I already did. And I want them to receive them at 10 a.m. So I'm going to put here, follow-up. This is a no that I'm only, that I am the only one who is going to see it, okay? It's only a detail for me about what is the, this task, uh, sorry, about what is this task to, okay? Or <coughs> <clears throat> so sorry, I have a flu. Okay, then it will take me right here again to my email templates tab where I need to either modify or change or select a different email template. I have here that this is for an offer, but I want to send a follow-up on an offer. So I already have an email template about it. I select it from my manage template. I open the drop-down list, select the email, and load it. So right here is changing the subject of the email and also the, the body of the email. So this is my follow-up, okay? Did you receive my offer? Now I just create the task and that's it. The system will send next Tuesday at 10 a.m. these three emails, okay, to these three properties. Wait for this to load. And as soon as you have created a, a special task, right here on this second column, you will be able to see the number of tasks. If you click on this number, the system will take you inside the follow history of that particular property and to the top of pending tasks. So you can see how many tasks and what is the task about. So this is an email that is going to, that was created today is going to be executed next Tuesday, January 7. It is about a follow-up. It is still pending because we haven't reached the date. The contact information, the phone number. And if you see this little blue thunder right here is because the task is going to be automatically done by the system. If you don't see that, it's because you have created a manual task. And if you move actually to your history tab, you will see that today you have created a task. It's going to be an email to be sent to this particular email address, this date, this time, about a follow-up, okay? If I go back, there is another place where you can see all the tasks and not the individual tasks for a particular property, where you can see all the tasks combined. So you can go right here to this task tab and you will see all the tasks that you have pending, the completed tasks, and the tasks that you have uh, tried to execute, but they have failed, okay? So let's move to the pending tasks. I have the three tasks that I create today, so I just need to select them. Again, because I don't want them to receive these emails, I'm going to delete them. But if you change your mind, if you don't want to, the emails to be sent today, you can either edit the, um, edit the task, for example. I just need to click, to select right here, okay, on any part of the line, view task detail. And on view task detail, let's say that this particular email, I don't want to send it next Tuesday, I want to send it next Monday. So I edit the date, next Monday sticks at 11 a.m. and update. 
So that is how you can edit the task. But if you don't want to send them, okay, then just delete them. Or if you want to send them right now, at this moment, click on complete. And the task is going to be execute, executed at the moment. I'm going to delete them. So three tasks are gone. And then if I go back to my follow-up and I refresh, I'm not going to see any pending tasks number on this column because I have deleted them, okay? Any questions, guys, about how you can create tasks, okay, and how you can execute execute these tasks from your follow-up? No. Okay. So let's continue. Another thing that you can see, okay, on this particular default template, on your following, on your follow-up, are the emails that you haven't read. I'm going to send me an email really quick, okay? One, one second, please. So I can receive it right here on, on my account. About a test. Oh no, actually, I'm going to reply an email. Let's filter. You can also filter on your follow-up for all the properties that you have there. So I'm going to filter by contact by my contact so right here on my filter icons i have the contact and i click on filter and now i'm going to see all the properties in my follow-up from 407 properties that the contact information is myself okay yes so 40 properties these properties i want to maybe send an email or maybe see an email that i haven't read and actually you can see them right here already, okay? This number, it will tell you all the emails that you haven't read through ReFX that you have there pending. Again, if I click on it, it will take me inside the follow history of this property, but now to the email tab. And how you can see, you have here a reply about an offer that I sent, okay? And if I open it, I can see the email view. This is only a test that I did. You can see when I received this email, okay, everything. And from here, you can reply, you can forward, you can send a new email with attachment, you can send a text message as well, a fax if you use it, or send a new contract. Or even if you have professional dialer, then you can make calls through the system, okay? So the system will let you know if you have received a uh, email, okay? And when and how and everything. Again, if I refresh, because I already read that email, I'm not going to see that number here, but I'm going to see the rest. Wait for this to load. So you can see that's it. Now I don't have email pendings to read from this particular property, I only have this. You can also sort these ascending or descending by the emails or by the pending tasks whenever you enter your VFX account. Now, this, la this column that it says LU, the days of insert date, that is the days that have happened since the last time that you did something with this property. For example, how many days has been since since you have sent a contract, since you modify the offer, since you send or receive an email, anything. So this is a, a good column that you can organize maybe the sending. If you want to see the properties that you haven't contact in a while, okay? For example, these properties right here, I have them contacted in a while. So I can try to select those and send emails, send contracts and text messages or schedule any kind of task, okay? Or even if I want to create or calculate offers, new offers for all of them, I can try to do them. Remember that you can select pages on your follow-up and you can organize these pages by 50, 100 properties per page or 250, okay? Now let's deselect this. And let me reset the filter so I can, but I can see again 
my 470 properties that I have in my, in my follower, okay? You can also filter not only by the contact, you can filter by address or by a specific state and county city of the properties that you have there on your follow-up, okay? You can select uh, to filter by the follow-up status, how you add the properties. If I only want to see all the properties that I have added as buying, you can do that through here. If I only want to see the properties that have a uh, status that are active or active by owner, okay, or expire or sold, you can do that as well. Or if you have created an alternative status, you can do that too. How can I create an alternative status for any property here? Again, let me organize this by the date instead of the LU that I had. Let's say that this property right here is a, sorry, this property right here is a property that I want to change to a different status. I don't, I already contact the agent and she told me that this property is under contract. You can click on the address of the property and go where it says change alternative status. And right here, select or create a new status. If you want to select another one, just open the drop down list select one of these, okay? Maybe, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm gonna see under contract right here. Under contract, and I just need to save it. Now, where I can see that particular status? I need to change the default template to the status view template. I just click on this icon, sorry, this icon, the grid template, and then I just need to select the other default status view. I select it and load. And here is where I can see the different status that I have created of this property has. So alternative status, no. Under contract, this is the one that I just changed. Active, no. By owner, non-active, okay. Whatever is the status. So once I change or create my status, I can filter by all the properties. I'm going to select right here, equal to under contract and filter. And I can see now only that particular property. If I go to the other view, the default view, I will still see only that particular property. Any question guys about how you can create or change your different status for any property? Let me know please. Remember you can raise your hands if you want me to stop. If you want me to repeat something, you can also do that. Okay. The last two things that you can see on this particular template on your following is this. You can change the priority for any property by default, they are always going to be medium, but if you want to change the priority to high or to load, okay, remember that you can just select it and load, okay, sorry, or refresh, and that will be there. So that way you can also filter by the priorities, okay? Just filter by priority that is high, and filter one property right here, see? You can as well filter for properties that are with pending taxes, properties that have an offer uh, percentage, okay, an offer percentage, let's say, equal or greater 17%. And there are high, sorry. I didn't remove that they were high, to select medium. The offer percentage is this one, okay? So all the calculations that I have done that are equal or greater than 70%. You can filter by properties that you have already sent contract, yes or no. Properties that you have already sent proof of funds, yes or no. Earnest money deposit, yes or no. If you have complete tasks for these properties, yes or no. If you have select the contact offer column, any amounts there that you want to filter by, if you have sent addendums or if the offer has been received. If you receive an email about an offer that you did and you want to check that right here on this, on this circle, you just need to do it manually. 
remember that the system will do it for you. It will check the circles automatically if you send a contract through VFX, if you send a proof of fund or an earnest money deposit, or if you send an addendum. But it's not going to check for you if the offer has been received. For example, this email right here, okay, that I, that I have for this property, let's say that this email it says right here, yes, your offer has been received. Um, we, we will send you the contract sign. We will be in touch. That is, a, that is a reply that I get. Imagine. So I go back here. And for this particular property, I will check inside the offer received. And I can make a note. Offer, sorry. Offer accepted. And click on save. As soon as you do that, the system will load and you will see for this particular property, this one, this particular property, that the check is inside that circle for the offer received. That is pretty much everything about today's webinar. I don't know if you have uh, questions about it, about how to do a follow up, how to send the contracts. Uh, the emails, the text messages, everything that is on your follow-up and how to uh, schedule tasks. Remember that you can also, if you are no longer interested in a particular property, don't delete it. It is best for you if you block it, okay? So let's say that I don't, I'm not interested anymore in these two, two properties right here. If you delete the property, whenever you run the search again, the properties are going to appear there on your results and you might add the properties again and start the process again when you don't want to. So instead of doing that, it's best for you to select the properties that you don't want to work anymore and block them. When you block the property, they are going to be removed from your following, okay? And they are going to be right here on your block properties. If you change your mind, you can always, let's refresh this, you can always select the properties and add them again to your follow-up, okay? You just need to select them and click on restore, and that will be all. Now, let's go back here. If you block the property, whenever you run the same search again, you will see right here that this particular symbol that the properties are blocked, so you don't waste the time anymore with the properties that you already add and send emails and you don't want to have uh, anymore. Any questions, please let me know. You're welcome, Irene. Please remember that you can, I, I'm so sorry again about today's um, interruption, okay? So sorry, the technical issues, uh, they sometimes they cannot be stopped. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching let us know, just send us a date and a, and a time. You can do it through here, through the chat window. I want a coaching, maybe today at 2 p.m. or tomorrow or next Monday, sorry, tomorrow, no, we don't work on weekends. Mondays to Fridays from 9 to 5 p.m. If you have questions, you can also do it through the chat. You can call us or send us an email at reafax at gmail.com. Thank you very much for having me today, Irene. Mr. Nash, Maureen, have a great day and I really hope that you have the best uh, new year and you can accomplish any of your, uh, any of the, the tasks that you have for this year. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.